Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Spotlight series. I'm your host Devi Malavika and joining me today is the very positive Liam Hobbs. Now Liam is the director and the proud owner of More Than Loft Ladders. MTLL specializes in installing loft ladders, hatches, boarding, insulation and a lot more. Right? So Liam, it is wonderful to have you on our Business Spotlight series. Why don't you get us started by telling us more about MTLL and how it all began? Um, so, more than loft ladders. Um, it was formed in two thousand and seven up in Bolton um, by a guy called Mark Rigby, um, and he franchised that. In two thousand and thirteen, I was looking for a for a new challenge. Um, Realised that I couldn't work for anybody. <laughs> uh, kept kept falling out with bosses, and and you know, typical sort of uh, entrepreneur thing that you realise that you're unemployable. Um, so <laughs> I was looking for something to do, saw more than loft ladders and, and just sort of fell in love with the idea of it. Just thought, what a fantastic idea. Back then, nobody mm. was doing it. It was a very different mm. market. Um, mm. And, you know, my wife said, you, you, you're mad what you're doing. There's never enough um, lofts that need ladders and, and, and whatever. Um, but, you know, luckily she supported me and, and went with it um, and just I worked hard at it because I really believed in it. And, mm. you know, after a couple of years, we were at the point where I was having to um, employ people to help me do the work. Um, and then over time, it, it just, it, it, I sort of grew bigger than the franchise, um, just through our natural growth. So the sort of next conversation to have was with the franchise or, you know, just saying, yeah, where, yeah, where is this going? Um, I'd, I'd like to be a part of it and potentially take it over. Um, and so, yeah, over over a period of a couple of years, things sort of took shape and um, we agreed that um, I'd buy the business off Mark. Um, so that was completed in October uh, hmm. 22. Um, yeah, so, yeah, franchisee became franchisor. Um, Wonderful. At that point, I'd grown sort of, our business in Nottingham and Derby um, and Sheffield mm. into mm. a business. We've got five installers um, carrying out the work. We've got a dedicated salesperson doing all the quotes and, and surveys. Um, we've got somebody in the office managing all the phone calls. Mm. Um, we've got an ops manager looking after all the installers. So we'd really turned, I'd really turned my franchise into a, into a managed business. Wow. Um, so my wife Kelly, who you know, eleven years ago said you you're nuts, what are you doing? Um, she's now running that side of the business, um, okay. and 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 I'm franchisor, um, and we've spent I've just sort of I spent the last year getting more than loft ladders franchise offering, um, fine tune new franchise agreements, new operations manual, uh, getting it ready to franchise because we're doing it differently to a lot of franchises. Um, we, we sort of call ourselves a franchise with a conscience. Um, mm. We want to work with our franchisees to help them grow their business. We, we're not a typical franchise in terms of we're just looking at turnover because that's how we get mm. paid. Mm. We're also it's looking wonderful. at making the, make, we, we want to make the franchisees um, more profitable. So, you know, the turnover can stay the same. Our money, our mm. income stays the same, but the franchisee is making more money. Um, because they're making more profits um, and we've got sort of growth triggers in the um, franchise agreement where the royalties come down as they grow mm. um, to give them the incentive and the reward for growing mm. um, and we're putting a lot of support in we do quarterly development days um, and so yeah it's took the last sort of 12 13 months putting that package together um, and then mm. yeah this year now we're ready to to go out and, and and get some new people on board and join the uh, More Than Loft Ladders family. Wow, wonderful. I, I just love how you're talking about growth and growth and growth all over the place. So <laughs> what would you attribute your growth to then? What would you attribute your growth to? Um, obviously, the market um, is so we don't have a typical customer, all homeowners mm. of all shapes, sizes, mm ages 
need our requirements for various reasons. Um, I think COVID helped us um, ah. in a sense that a lot of people changed their sort of working patterns. Uh, a lot of people obviously were forced to work at home um, and, and yeah. now more and more people do work at home. Um, yeah. So we found sort of, you know, once the initial lockdown was lifted, and we could go back to work after the first lockdown. Um, that was a bit strange because it didn't sort of feel ethically right to do it. But then you've got to put your business hat on and say, well, actually, we're working within the laws. We're working within the parameters mm. given. So let's do it. Um, mm. And it was a service that was needed at the time. Uh, a lot of people mm. were then starting to go back to work. We're doing it at home. Um, mm. They were sat with a laptop on the kitchen table um kids running around everywhere and and it, <laughs> they needed they needed somewhere to to go and do right. the work they need they needed to mm. get all the clutter out of that spare room so they could turn it into an office um mm. so they were looking up into the loft and saying right well all this stuff that's in cluttering up the spare room needs to go in the loft mm. so that i can have somewhere quiet to work um so it, it, in a way that helped us and plus the fact that also everybody was at home so they were able to get stuff done. They couldn't spend money right. on holidays, so they started spending money on the homes. Um, right. So it, 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 after the initial, you know, mm. six week period of the initial lockdown, mm. um, you know, it, it went very quickly from, you know, March the 23rd or whatever it was when we were told lockdown, this is it. And mm. we're thinking, oh, God, is this the end of it? Is this the end of my business? I can't, you know. Um, to eight weeks later, um, the turnaround was fantastic. And, and yeah. so COVID did help. Um, and, and plus the fact that you know, the cost of living crisis and yeah. energy bills and all that sort of stuff that's come after that. Um, mm. If people can't afford to move, they improve. Um, right. And they're looking for more space. Um, mm. Newer houses now, you know, I think everybody who buys a new build now, so it has the same problem as there's, there's no storage. There's no storage space. Um, you don't have an understairs yes. cupboard anymore. Um, mm. So it, it, it's all those factors um, mm. are pushing people up into using the loft for storage. Um, so we have young family, you know, people starting a family, need the spare room to turn it into a nursery. Um, people working from home need a bit of office space, so they need to clear that room. Mm right through to you know the, the sort of older people who are they've done the family stuff they've retired they're downsizing mm. Um, mm. and they move okay. they move into a smaller property and it's like where do i put all the stuff we've collected over these years um right. so they need the loft as well so it it, it, it mm. it's something that most homeowners have a have a need for right wonderful so what i'm hearing Liam, is you saw the opportunity and you took that opportunity, you worked on it, and now you've grown, even in one of the toughest times being COVID, right? Yeah. So what would you say is the current challenge that you're facing in the business? Um, so the current challenges at the moment are um, increased competition. Um, so the, the loft boarding industry, as I said earlier, um, mm. to, uh, back in 2013, there was very few people doing it. Um, mm. And now, you know, there's a lot of people doing it. There's some companies that have sort of set up and, and, and doing very well and they're very reputable. Um, yeah. Competition's a good thing. Um, yeah. You know, you need competitors out there to keep you honest, keep you on your toes. Yeah. Um, you know, there's also a lot of people out there who just see it as a, a way of earning a quick buck and, you know, they're not so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, th th they get found out. You know, we, we don't need to, to, to worry about things. Right. We... We pride ourselves on 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 the quality of the work and the service we deliver, um, and and you know we're, we're, that that is that is what we pride ourselves on, and that that is ultimately what's what's sort of keeping us ticking along and 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 you know working with people, um, and our franchisees, you know, they all share the same sort of values. Um, it's you know it's 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 quality over over price. Okay um and, and and as a franchise or I, I i suppose now you know with my franchise or hat on the you know the biggest challenge is is sort of 
we've got the package together now and it, it's it's selling that package you know why why should you buy a more than loft ladders franchise rather than you know whatever else is on the market um and you know that's why we've sort of positioned ourselves as a you know franchise with a conscience we want to be a, a bit different to everybody else Fair enough. yes absolutely and quality over price always i love that i love how yeah. uh, everybody is sticking to the culture and the values because i think that's very important to form a very cohesive team as well so loving that and i also happen to notice and i'm putting this out there because i found this very interesting uh, and i loved it i'm a fan so i happen to notice from the blog on your website that you're a certified mental health first aider and yes. i just loved it liam and I'm, I'm putting this out there because uh, i just want to know has it helped you professionally and if so how because this is something that i haven't you know just i think it's very uh, i wouldn't say it's very usual that you find a lot of uh, mental health first aiders so i just love the fact that you took that proactive approach there and i thought you know i'll project that during our interview so tell us a little bit about that um yeah so i mean it's it's a subject that's that's quite close to me um i've mm. in in i've had mental health issues in the past and and, mm. and i still have mm. um you know I'm, I'm 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 not afraid to sort of you know put my hand up and say yeah i struggle um i take medication um mm. it works for me doesn't work for everybody mm. um and i think as a as a business owner sometimes it's a very lonely place um mm. and it it, it, there's nothing wrong with you know just putting your hand up and saying i need some help um yeah. and i see people struggling mm. and i just i just you know it's one of those things where you want to be able to help without saying let me help you um yeah. and so to me it was important to do that to support my network um so the franchisees um it, it just it, it, as I say, it's, it's quite close to me, um, and it, mm. it, it, it's just for me, it's the right thing to do. If if I can support somebody, you know, and 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 just make somebody's life a little bit easier by picking up on something, mm. Um, mm. and also challenging, you know, challenging mm. the misconceptions around, and that's the biggest yes. thing with raising yeah. the awareness. It, it, it's challenging stuff, um, mm. you know. It, it's when people say, you know pull yourself together, man up, you know, that sort of stuff. It, mm, it, mm. It's challenging that attitude and making people realise that it, it's not yeah. just a case of pulling yourself together. You didn't get out the wrong side of bed. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I love that because huge shout out to that. I really wanted to put it out there because we all struggle, including me. So we all mm. have that. And I just love the fact that it's on your professional website because, uh, you know, People are often considered to be something personal, but for you to show up and to be able to show up even for your team and your network, like you mentioned, I think uh, that's just remarkable. So mm. I, I yeah, really love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I truly appreciate that. And I'm using this platform to appreciate that. Uh, and, you know, I just, I really wanted to come to that. So thanks so much uh, for being our mental health first data, being there for your network. Uh, I think that's amazing. Now I will go back to probably one of the last questions. If yeah. you were to begin from square one in the business, what would you have done differently? Oh, that is a <laughs> um, <laughs> the, very good question. Uh, not mm. much. Um, mm. I, I, I I try not to regret things. Um, mm. I think it's a waste of energy. Um, <laughs> I would, I would have took people on sooner if, if I'd have known what I know now. I would have, mm. um, I'd have made that step earlier. Mm. Um, mm. I probably wasted twelve to eighteen months worrying about whether taking somebody on was the right thing to do. As soon as right. I'd done it, you think, "Right, mm. I should have done this a year ago." Um, right. But it, it, that's the only thing I think I would change. Um, of course, I've made mistakes along the way um i'm a big believer in if you if, if you're not trying hard enough if you don't make any mistakes um you've 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 got to push the boundaries um yes. and if you know if something doesn't work you know just own it yes. um yes. and you you, you know not to do it again 
yes so, and it's okay to make mistakes because i think you learn from them if you don't make mistakes you always think you're doing the right thing and you don't exactly learn so i yeah. think it just pushes your learning a lot further if you make mistakes yeah right so yeah. it, it, it was very much yeah i'm i'm a big believer yeah make mistakes learn from them um mm. you'll never get anywhere without pushing those pushing the boundaries and 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 you know going with that and also the people you surround yourself with um you know mm. if 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 you if if you're the you know if you're the cleverest per- person in the room you you're not in the right room mm. um i yes. try and put myself with people that i can learn from um mm. as well as you know i'm 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 a big believer in sharing what's worked for me um mm. but you know i also need to know what's worked for people up there um so yeah it, it's surrounding yourself with with and rubbing shoulders with the right people mm yes absolutely i agree 100% wow what a valuable conversation i just love it there's so much that i can take away and i'm sure that there's so much that our viewers can also take away uh, and i'm very uh, you know thankful that i'm very grateful that i had the opportunity to have this conversation with you so thank you so much for taking the time out to be a part of our business spotlight thanks so much yeah no thank you thank you very much for asking it was it was an honor um, and it's lovely to talk to you